Good morning, everybody. So this is the session Chasing Heritage Deeds. If you were here for the session of Professor Juan Barceló, it's not going to happen now. It's going to happen after this session. We had to switch the, the schedule the other day, and unfortunately on the printed program, this session is still on this morning, but they are starting, I think, uh, today in the afternoon. So the session that is going on here now is Chasing Heritage Thieves, Digital Methods and Approaches to Contrasting Trafficking and Looting of Cultural Property. And um, uh, just a few uh, information about, uh, about the session, first of all, before starting our presentation. Uh, the speakers, given that we will have a little bit more time, the speaker uh, will have a, bit, a little bit more than the usual 15 minutes. They are going to have about 20 minutes and there will be more time for discussion later. So I hope that um, we will be able to have a little bit of discussion on this important topic. Also, we had unfortunately a number of people that for different reasons, personal or other type had to drop out of the session, so I will say something about this uh, during uh, my presentation. So the sessions should, uh, the, each uh, presentation should last around 20 minutes. We have also been provided with these um, uh, signs, so we will show them to the speakers uh, so that they know that uh, they have five minutes left of, or two minutes left. Um, Coming to the, the session content, I am Mariana Traviglia and this is Riccardo Giovannelli. We are both involved with the Nature Project and the Nature Project is the um, project, the European project that sponsored this uh, session. It's a, an Horizon 2020 funded uh, project that uh, aims to build a social and informatic uh, network uh, of uh, um, groups, people, individuals, institutions working on fight on the fight for to, uh, trafficking and looting of cultural heritage. The project has started a few months ago. Uh, we will soon have also our website. Uh, at the moment, we only have a temporary blog, but uh, next month uh, we will have the website and we will uh, provide more information. Uh, about our activities and the number of seminars that we are going to organize in the next two years. The project is a CSA, if you are familiar with this terminology from the European Community Funded Project. So it's a coordination and support action and it's, an, um, it's a project meant to put together people that are already working and have projects going on on trafficking and looting of cultural heritage and create a network so that uh, together we can work toward uh, our goals together we are clearly stronger and we can do a lot more things so the project has funding for organizing conferences training workshops and uh, we are aiming to create a larger network of uh, at least four or five hundred institutions and individuals working in the next year and we are working with the european community toward the sustainability of this project after uh, the end of the, pro the funded project itself, so that the network that has been created can continue its work. And the network will be um, con kept together, let's say, by a social platform that is a digital platform that is being created by the project and that we hope to present next year at the next CAA conference. So, as you know, since you are here and you have an interest in this topic, um, looting and trafficking of cultural heritage is a phenomenon that started in the, um, million, several, not only several years ago, started hundreds and hundreds of years ago. Uh, it was, it's a phenomenon that was happening even during uh, the antiquity. So there has always been an interest in antiquarian objects and in their looting and, and trafficking. More recently, because of a number of political reasons, we have been uh, facing an insurgence of this phenomenon and has, been, been, has become particularly dramatic with uh, uh, you know, what has been happening, as we all know, in, in, uh, in Baghdad and then later on in Egypt and in Syria. Syria is probably the worst uh, of the 
um, you know, what that has been, I, I would say, is the peak of uh, the uh, trafficking has been happening in uh, connection with the Syrian events. So it's probably, and it's also the most known because finally uh, there has been an attention from media on, on this uh, big, uh, big problem and now people are starting to be more aware of it and how trafficking and looting and trafficking on cultural heritage is also related to terrorism. So there is a lot of more attention now on the phenomenon and we know that the phenomenon is an international scale so we go from the little farmer that finds objects while plowing his uh, field and put them online or send them um, through uh, you know, personal contacts till we go to big international ring and people of organized crime that use also the fund, the, um, the money coming from selling uh, looted artifacts uh, for financing terrorism. So uh, finally there is a very strong interest also from police forces because of these reasons because now uh, looting and trafficking of cultural heritage counts as the third uh, richest way to uh, fund terrorism in the world. So uh, finally we have the full attention of, uh, of police also on these topics. Uh, this session is meant to bring attention now to the technologies that are now being used to support the fight to trafficking and looting of cultural heritage. In the last year we have seen a number of digital technologies that have been applied in different ways to, um, to try to fight uh, the, this crime. So we go from uh, uh, remote sensing, which is by far the most used, uh, to other type of technologies like network analysis, the use of database of looted uh, artifacts, uh, the use of web and social media data mining in order to discover potential uh, crime online, um, uh, campaigns, the social media campaigns through the web, uh, technologies like blockchain that are becoming very interesting for um, provenance of cultural heritage that can in this way uh, prevent the phenomenon of uh, uh, giving a new identity to cultural heritage in order to make it easier to sell. And then we have a number also of uh, more advanced technologies having to do with deep learning applied to the search on the internet of looted uh, artifacts. Today, unfortunately, we were, uh, we were supposed to have a lot of, uh, quite large, uh, you know, display of this technology, but for a reason or another, as I said, we had a lot of people that couldn't attend. So I will go through very quickly to some of the um, um, presentations. Uh, no, no, I'm not going through the presentation, of course, just mentioning them, just to give you an idea of current uh, development in the, in the research. And, that, and also because uh, we hope to have at least uh, some articles out of it, even if these people couldn't attend and present uh, their, um, um, their work. But uh, I'll tell you about this later, is, uh, the last slide in this presentation. So, as I said, by far, remote sensing has been in this year the most used uh, digital technology uh, for fighting cultural uh, trafficking and looting of cultural heritage. Uh, remote sensing has been used by a number of projects now to, to check uh, sites and uh, because uh, remote sensing clearly is time saving compared to field work and uh, enables also to recognize uh, the phenomenon in sites that are inaccessible like uh, war zones like we had in Syria and part of Iraq. And uh, uh, it has been used by a number of projects, of which two will be presented uh, today. But uh, the other two I want to mention uh, that are not going to be presented, but uh, um, we hope uh, will be presented as, um, as, in, <coughs> sorry, as papers later on. Uh, the work from Nicola Mazzini and Rosala Saponar that applied uh, a semi-automatic procedure to detect the looted site in Syria and in Peru. And then we have the work done by the Amena project. I'm sure all of you know it. That this project has been going on for several years. Uh, Robert Bewley was supposed to be here to present it. And they have been this very large scale observation of looted site across a number of years using 
uh, easily accessible technologies like uh, Google Earth, but then improving their uh, overall procedure. And, and they have now a huge database of looted sites and a large group of people very experienced in recognizing looted sites. So we will have then the work of, um, done by the Italian Space Agency. We will have two presentation from the data database that is here and that they will come on stage uh, soon after me. Uh, other two papers unfortunately couldn't be presented for other reasons have to do with the use of social media in um, and the, uh, let's say checking social media to see if uh, and doing data mining to extract the relevant information for the fight against looting and trafficking. The papers of Katie Paul and uh, Sam Hardy that uh, are not going to be presented unfortunately but they are really important and interesting. The emerging on technologies like blockchain, there are at least two groups working on blockchain specifically for cultural heritage and archaeology. This was the one being presented by Grant Cox. There is also another group that is working on the same technology that was supposed to have a uh, workshop yesterday that unfortunately has been cancelled because there was not enough people signing up. And so apparently fighting <laughs> And looting and trafficking is not a priority yet, so we were really sorry to see that our colleague um, uh, workshop was also cancelled for this reason. But again, we hope to have some contribution from um, from them as, as a paper. Uh, another data, another paper that has been uh, cancelled is the one about databases and inventories. A uh, work done on uh, uh, you know, creating repositories of, uh, of uh, the looted, looted and lootables uh, cultural heritage so that there is a trace of it and it's uh, easier also to take care of what has not been looted yet but it might risk to be. Donna Yates is another famous name in the, uh, in the community of people working in uh, fighting, trafficking and looting of cultural heritage. She is in charge of a group that has been directly uh, funded by the European Commission in order to do an overview on technologies that can be applied to, um, to fight the trafficking and looting. And we were hoping to have her uh, first results, but unfortunately for family reasons she, she couldn't attend. But again, we hope to have her contribution. What we are going to see today are the two presentations from the Italian Space Agency today that we are going to introduce um, soon after me and the presentation from uh, Serena Pifani and Michela De Bernardin about uh, this journal which is um, working of, um, on disseminating information um, not only for specialists but also for uh, in an interested public uh, working on uh, on you know spreading the word about these important topics. So what I was mentioning before about uh, the fact that we hope to have their written contribution is that soon after this conference we will launch in the journal of computer applications in archaeology archaeology we will launch a special issue on digital methods to fight looting and trafficking of cultural heritage. So even if we didn't have the chance to um, hear directly from these scholars the work that uh, they are doing, we hope to have their contribution on, um, on uh, this, uh, this topic and that in, in the next months. And we also invite you, because you are here, I assume you have an interest in this um, type of technology, so we invite you to, if you are working on this, to uh, propose uh, papers, uh, to come and talk to me later, and uh, we will be very happy to, to help you to uh, submit a paper for uh, the, the special issue. So this is something that I will repeat also during the AGM, uh, the day after tomorrow, uh, not tomorrow actually, tomorrow. Uh, we still have APC waivers for the Journal of Computer Applications and Archaeology, so even if you don't have funds, there is still some funds available at the moment, so if you are interested in uh, um, proposing something, please do. There is also the possibility to be supported financially because, as you know, the journal is open access, so there is an APC to, to pay.